at the very beginning of time, when the Beloved created the heavens and the earth, something happened that has long since been forgotten. But I would like to tell you about it now. The Beloved had just finished making the sea and the land, and all the little stars way up in the sky, and the moon and the sun. He was very pleased with all the planets and all the animals, the fish in the sea, the birds of the air, the creatures upon the dry land, and not forgetting those who hopped in and out of the water. The Beloved wanted to call all the animals to him, to tell them something special. Among all his newly made creatures, one of the smallest was Shadrach, the red squirrel. Shadrach was scampering about in some leaves and bushes, finding out about this strange and wonderful world, when suddenly there came a long, low whistle that turned into the most beautiful song Shadrach had ever heard. The music began to ring all the way round the world. Every animal on earth knew what it meant. It was the Beloved calling them to come to him. He wanted to speak to them. Off they ran, swam or flew, over the hills and down along the valleys and through the waterways. And in the twinkling of an eye, there they were, in the garden of the Beloved. The light spread out from where he stood. There was a freshness around him that made this the most wonderful place on earth. Be still, my creatures, he said. All the animals fell silent, waiting for his next command. Shadrach's whiskers twitched, his nose wrinkled, like all the other creatures, he wondered why the Lord had brought them all together. I have called you here to tell you what your life's work is to be, he said in a mighty voice. Shadrach's little heart beat faster. Oh, he thought, I can't wait until the Lord tells me what I'm going to do. Every one of you has a job to do, a reason why you have been created under the heavens, and why I have brought you into being. I will start with the smallest creatures, those that are most plentiful, the ants. Yes, yes, cried the ants together. You are to run around the world picking up all the dust and the dirt, the little pieces of leaves, clearing them up, making the place tidy, and using them to build tiny cities for yourselves. Yes, yes, they answered. We will, we will. Now I will go to the largest creatures, the whales. I want you to create beautiful music in the depths of the sea night and day, singing lullabies to all the other creatures that swim. The whales replied, in a whale song that is really too beautiful for words. Yes, O oh Lord, we will sing to you and to the whole of our watery world for as long as we swim these seas and oceans. Shadrach listened to everything that was said, his long tufty ears twitching this way and that, as he picked up every command that the Lord made, and every willing reply that came back. One by one, the Beloved called each of the various creatures upon the earth. He must have been at it all day, but really it seemed to take only a few minutes because it was all so exciting. Everyone eagerly awaited their turn. 
Butterflies, you are to beautify the air with all the colors of the rainbow. I will give you a secret name. Flutterbys, for that is what you are going to do. Flutterby. Then the butterflies, or flutterbys, all spread their wings, and with a shimmering of insect dust, they flapped away into the air, which was their way of saying, Yes, O oh Lord, we will, we will. Thank you, oh thank you for giving us such a lovely thing to do. As the day went on, the crowds of creatures got fewer and fewer. With great joy, they went their way across the earth to carry out the Beloved's will for them. By now the evening shadows were beginning to appear. Shadrach looked this way and that as almost all the creatures disappeared. He began to feel a little worried. Inside he thought, it mustn't be my turn yet. I wonder what the Lord has got for me to do. Shadrach thought as hard as he could, but he honestly couldn't think of a single job that there was left to do that had not already been asked of some other creature. As the sun began to sink over the horizon, there was only Shadrach and the snails left. The snails looked at each other, their long antenna forming a sort of question mark as if to say, What's the Lord got for us then? And you snails, said the Beloved, looking down lovingly at them, are to be a reminder to all the other creatures in my world that there is no need to rush anything. All will take place as it should, in its own good time, even if it does take all day. Well done for being so patient and waiting all this time. The snails nodded at what the Beloved told them to do and slid off to enjoy their steady, unhurried lives. Poor Shadrach. He was the last one left. The Beloved did not seem to have noticed him. His lip wobbled. His little head drooped slightly. Then worst of all, the Beloved seemed to turn and walk away. A look came over Shadrach's face as if he was going to burst into tears. So he quickly shot off and dived behind a little grassy mound where he hid, sad and afraid. I knew it, thought Shadrach. There's nothing for me to do. What good am I to anyone? I'm just useless. Look at me. Everyone's forgotten me because I can't do anything useful or helpful for the Lord. I do believe a tear could be seen in the corner of Shadrach's eye and was just about to drop to the ground when... Shadrach Squirrel! A deep, strong voice was heard ringing across the grassy meadow in the evening light, reaching Shadrach's little ears. Two tufts of red fur slowly rose above the grassy bump where Shadrach was hiding followed by two beady little eyes, looking very worried. The Beloved turned to face where Shadrach had thought he was hidden and looked straight at him. The Beloved's eyes met Shadrach's. Shadrach Squirrel. A warm smile began to break over the Beloved's face. What are you doing down there? I thought you'd forgotten me. I thought that you didn't want me to do anything. I, I was beginning to think there was no place for me, nothing important to do, and nowhere special to go. You're right. You're not going anywhere. Shadrach's heart sank. But then the Beloved added, You're staying right here with me. Your special job in life is to be my friend at all times. To sit on my shoulder and to go about with me as I walk the earth. 
making sure that everything and everyone is well on the planet that I have created. Shadrach's mouth dropped open. He sat amazed as this wonderful news began to sink in, filling him with a lovely, calm feeling. Then the beloved winked at him. With one bound, Shadrach sprang from behind his grassy covering, scampered across the grass, and in three leaps was up on the beloved's great shoulder. Come, my friend, we have work to do. First, however, after a day like today, we must take some rest. With that, Shadrach climbed down and snuggled into the pocket of the Beloved's long, white robe. I must be the happiest creature in the world, he thought. The Beloved strolled off into the golden sunset, pleased with what he had achieved that day, and pleased with all his creatures, and especially pleased with his choice of closest friend, Shadrach, the little red squirrel. Shadrach danced a merry dance that evening, and he's been dancing ever since. He reminds each one of us that we can draw close enough to the beloved's heartbeat to know that we too have been called for some special purpose in life.